David René. I think you are president of the International Solar Energy Society and you were a keynote speaker this morning to open our conference here. You had a very interesting topic saying how solar heating and cooling technologies can support a 100% renewable energy world. So are we on a good track? Yes, I think we're on a very good track. Of course, uh, in terms of the, the global climate issue, we have a long way to go overall to uh, reduce our carbon emissions to the point where we can keep the Earth warming at uh, no more than two degrees centigrade. But uh, clearly the solar uh, heating and cooling technology is gonna be a very important contribution to the solution to that problem of reducing climate or reducing climate um, um, impacts and, and, and reducing the, cli the carbon emissions associated with the conventional fossil fuel technologies. Well, I think we need um, solar heating and cooling in large scale. That means we need various professional solutions on a very cost-effective basis, and we need good uh, irradiation predictions to plan the output of the uh, solar systems. I think this is one of your focus points in your research. So what can be the impact of your research for the industry and the, the installation planners? Yes, you're right. The solar resource, of course, is a fundamental driver for all of these technologies, and as they scale up, become larger and larger. The design of these technologies is going to be very much dependent upon the uh, pre presumed what solar resource. And so the data that's developed on the solar resource side to allow for the sizing and, and, and uh, des design of these systems is going to be very critical it, uh, in terms of its accuracy and completeness uh, because financial institutions will rely on understanding the uncertainty of that data in order for them to decide what kind of financing they will offer for these technology developments. So the getting the resource correct and being able to communicate the data to the financial community so they can assign um, a low level of risk to the design of the station is very critical. We call that developing bankable solar resource data. And that's really important now to make sure the data are accurate and complete uh, that we have understanding of the long-term interannual variability of the data. These are the things that the financial community looks for when they make decisions on financing projects. Very interesting, and I think we have another big challenge, and this is making people across the renewables work together, because we can only treat climate change and the energy transition of the energy grid in general as a common unity on energy. So what is um, your, con your organization ISIS doing in this respect? Well, ISIS is really working hard to communicate the um, large technological uh, research is being done in the area of solar technology development and also grid integration development and renewables working together uh, to communicate this information to a much broader audience and getting to the decision makers and to the financial community, getting them to understand the value of the research that's coming out and how it can be used to scale up these technologies in a very large way. Uh, this is going to be very important. Solar thermal technologies, for example, are going to really affect the demand side of the load that the utilities are trying to meet overall. And uh, so th therefore we have to understand the, uh, how the solar thermal technologies are going to be working with other variable renewable technologies such as uh, photovoltaics and wind and uh, how these technologies all work together uh, in order for the utilities to be able to meet variable loads associated that, that are even more variable because of these technologies as part of the energy system. I think you obviously are a senior in this field and we need a lot of uh, engineers who are burning to have the big revolution of renewables in the world. So what is ISIS doing to bring the, the youngsters among the engineers to this track? Well, that's a very good question. And ISIS has instituted a program called Young ISIS, where we try to attract emerging professionals and, and encourage students to move into this field, uh, both technologically, but also for policy and analysis and, and even the financing of these projects. It's very important to have a large uh, workforce moving into this area. If we're going to move into a 100% renewable energy, obviously we're talking about a significant scale up of these technologies and we need a good workforce and a, and a good professional community uh, available to really make sure this happens. And so what's critical is for ISIS to encourage the development of a young workforce um, to, to meet these needs and we have uh, very active programs within the society, uh, especially through our webinars and through our congresses 
to allow young people to network with uh, pr uh, professionals and to understand where the opportunities exist and what, uh, what the fields are of most promise for them to move into. Well, a very excellent work. Thank you very much for the interview. Thank you very much.